Now, there are two kinds of working hard. You can work hard, you can work smart, or you can work dumb. When I was in sixth grade, my dad dumped a pile of bricks in the backyard. And after school, he had us move, me and my brothers, move the bricks to the side yard. The next day, he had us move them back to the backyard. The next day, back to the side yard, and so forth. This continued for quite a while. I'm not sure what he intended by this, but I did learn that work, hard work, for hard work's sake alone, would not do. Later, in observing the tenure system so endemic to academic ventures, I would think to myself, hey, they're just moving a pile of bricks. In fact, I began to doubt traditional education. I committed myself to educating myself as opportunities arose. We are going to talk about six books that Michael Burry recommends every investor must read. First quick side note, did you guys know Michael Burry was actually in med school on track to become a physician, but his love for stocks kept him from continuing medical school and he decided to pursue a career on Wall Street? Wonder how long the 2008 crisis had continued if Burry never became a money manager? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Anyways, back to the video. You guys might ask how we know that Burry actually recommended these books. Well, there's a cool story behind that. He actually recommended these six books back in a forum, The Silicon Investor, during a Q&A back in 1997, way before he became famous for his 2008 bet against the real estate market. Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits by Philip A. Fisher Yet another book that's highly revered in the world of investing and an all-time favourite of Warren Buffett, Burry has also said in interviews that the principles of Fisher were a key part in how he built his portfolio. While Benjamin Graham talks about investing early in undervalued stocks and holding, Philip Fisher's philosophy was the diametric opposite. Philip Fisher's approach, which he lays out in this book, was to find companies that were priced well and bound to grow, which could also be held for a very long time. Fisher's investment philosophy was simple on its face. Purchase a concentrated portfolio of companies with compelling growth prospects that you understand very well and hold them for a long time. He was famously quoted as saying the best time to sell a stock is almost never. His most famous stock pick was Motorola, which he purchased in 1955 and held until his death. Fisher recommended targeting businesses for investment that had growth orientation, high profit margins, high return on capital, a commitment to research and development, a superior sales organisation, a leading industry position and proprietary products or services. He was famous for the depth of his research on companies with which he would invest. He relied on personal connections, what he called the business grapevine and conversation to learn about businesses before buying stock. Warren Buffett has said that his own investment approach is 85% Benjamin Graham and 15% Philip Fisher. Why Stocks Go Up and Down by William H. Pike Being able to read a financial statement to learn whether a company is valued correctly is a core skill for value investors. And for decades, William Pike's Why Stocks Go Up and Down has been a top recommendation for investors to learn this skill. It explains the basics of financial statement analysis, cash flow generation, stock price valuation, and more. Commonly misunderstood terms such as capitalize, equity, and diluted earnings are explained clearly. Stock valuation methods including price earnings ratio, price cash flow ratio, and enterprise value, EBITDA, are covered. The book is about fundamentals. It's not an investment system or how to make a million dollars in the market. The subtitle, The Book You Need to Understand Other Investment Books, says it best. Buffettology by Mary Buffett and David Clark. In the world of investing, the name Warren Buffett is synonymous with success and prosperity. As with many investors, Burry learned a lot from following Warren Buffett. The book Buffettology takes a deep dive into Warren Buffett's investment approach. The book reviews decades of Buffett trades and dives you into the lessons you can learn from them. While Buffett started investing with the Ben Graham method of investing, Buying a lot of cheap companies, his partner Charles Munger convinced him that it was better to buy good companies with high potential than cheap companies with good potential. With the help of Munger, Buffett seriously improved upon Graham. The key realisation was that if you only focus on getting something for the cheapest possible price, you will end up with crappy companies in your portfolio which never realise their value, or even worse, 
see their value decline over time because many of these cheap companies are cheap for a good reason. If, on the other hand, you purchase a great company with a durable competitive advantage, what Buffett calls a consumer monopoly, and which is able to consistently compound its returns at above average rates, the price you pay becomes less of an issue because such a company will see its value steadily increase over time. In Buffett's own words, time is the friend of the wonderful business, the enemy of the mediocre. This book perfectly outlines the growth of Buffett as an investor and how he developed his own philosophies that put him on the pedestal he now stands upon. Value Investing Made Easy by Janet Lowe This book can be best understood from its own subtitle, Benjamin Graham's Classic Investment Strategy Explained for Everyone. While many consider this book a bit too basic to make serious trades, it's worth a read to truly understand the principles of Graham without being overwhelmed. Easy to understand style, laced with entertaining stories and quotes, financial writer Janet Lowe demystifies value investing and gives you simple to use trading tactics that can help you reap enormous rewards. Burry himself places this lower in his list because even though it's a great read, it needs to be supplemented by reading the actual works of Graham. This could act only as a gateway. The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham a classic book on value investing, The Intelligent Investor is a popular favourite among the greatest investors of all time. Written by Benjamin Graham in 1949 and updated many times since, its lesson remains timeless. Burry has said more than once that his investment style is built upon Benjamin Graham's writings. Graham famously explained, In the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. In this book, Graham explains that short-term prices are determined by an investor's mood and not fundamental analysis. Burry has said that this has helped him over the years find undervalued stocks that rose significantly over the years. And he isn't the only one to do so. This book is a recommended read by all the top investors, the likes of even Warren Buffett. Security Analysis by Benjamin Graham with yet another book by Graham, we see how much influence he has had on Burry's investments. Graham wrote The Intelligent Investor with the aim to teach value investing to the masses. Security Analysis, on the other hand, is the more technical book, aimed at those looking for a deep dive into value investing. The objective of Security Analysis is to present important facts regarding a stock or bond in a fashion that is both informing and useful for a potential owner and to reach reliable conclusions based on facts and standards concerning a security safety and attractiveness relative to the current price range. Warren Buffett has praised this book multiple times and Burry has said more than once that his investment style is built upon the book's security analysis. All my stock picking is 100% based on the concept of a margin of safety. The reason this book is so low on his list is because while it's worth its weight in gold, this isn't a book even for an intermediate investor and definitely not a starter's book. The advanced concepts take experience to understand and apply and therefore are not for the average investor. Bonus, the big short. A book recommendation from Burry and Jamie May, the president of Cornwall Capital amongst many others, the book discusses a type of investing Greenblatt has become known for, value and special situations investing. The idea behind the approach is to find events that have little to no impact on the underlying fundamentals of a company, but which devalue the company's stock price. While there are many varieties of special situation investing, one example would be investing in companies that recently incurred some bad PR. Perhaps their CEO left or Elon Musk tweeted about them. Situations like these could cause the price to drop even though the fundamentals of the company haven't changed. This creates an opportunity to buy low. Michael Burry has created a lot of value from this kind of investing. He was known for shorting the 2007 mortgage bond market and he held some stock in GameStop late last year.